Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. As you can by the title of today's video, my first game against a true post scorer in NBA 2K25 on the comp proving grounds 2v2. So as you can see, we have a lockdown and post score duo of all badness in the world <laughs> right here. So as you can see, they got a 98 steal with the hall, you know, the legend for that matter, Interceptor. And then obviously 94 Primdy as well, agility, and still a decent three-pointer to be able to hit. I'm not gonna lie, it's a great build to pair with this build that is also on the court right here. And now, as you can see as well, a 7-1 true blue inside post score, 96 close shot, 95 strength, 93 post control, and even still 93 block. So, let me explain to you why that's a terrible, terrible matchup for our lineup. And when I say terrible, I mean we match up really bad with it. We have a stretch big of the two who's not exactly a big body. My IRL Tanner right here, he's got a really good mid-range three-pointer, stuff like that. You know, obviously has like the 86-3, 94 midi kind of point point forward like stretch big if you will it has decent ball handle and all that as well but then for me i'm obviously not a great matchup offensively for either of these builds i can't go at a pure lock 6-6 six, six, and i definitely can't go at a 7-1 post score with high block rating i'm on a pure inside 6-8 so it's a really tough matchup for us obviously in twos there's a lot of matchup related things we can take advantage of smaller point guards with our lineup because obviously i'm a pretty good defender on the build with like 92 prim obviously uh 85 steel stuff like that and even good strength speed agility stuff like that as well but where it becomes a problem is when i no longer am needed for perimeter defensive oriented things aka a lineup like this and that becomes useless all it's about is interior defending and <laughs> that's about it and you need offense other than that so this is the nightmare lineup for us to run into. Absolute terrible matchup. Neither of us can really guard the post score one-on-one, -on -one, and it's going to be super hard for us to create offense, at least through me. Now, here's the actual truth to this, though. I'm not going to lie, fellas. We've played a lot of twos, me and Tanner have, on this Proving Ground stuff. We're actually ranked in the top 100 right now, and what's actually harder for us to go against, all truth be told, is double lockdowns. I'm talking two pure locks that just pass the ball back and forth over and over again <laughs> and do stuff like that, where they just get random lanes, random bumps, random this, that, or the other, and then offensively, they just pass it back and forth. However, with a lineup like this, it's a lot more brain dead on offense. You can really just obviously give it to the post score. You can see, and Tanner doesn't have high steal rating either, so it's another reason why it's just an awful matchup for us. And then again, this guy's sparking from the corner with 83 three-pointer. Now, I will say, as the gameplay goes on, and there's actually back-to-back -back games against this team, we ended up matching up with them in like back-to-back -back games. We ended up kind of coming to the conclusion that this dude is going to dominate in the paint, and if he's going to kill with like post spins and drop steps and stuff like that, let's just leave the dude open and see how much he can actually hit for the game. Now, I'm not going to lie, that is other people's ideology as well, because like right here, I would much rather see the lockdown hit a wide open shot, but <laughs> at the end of the day, we don't have much say in it in some cases. Now, I will get into another topic in a sec, but let me just finish off where I am. Obviously, we don't want to see any two-point easy dunks and layups or anything like that. So sh so shots like this, it's definitely something I'd rather see. And as you can see, it does pay off. So that is to our advantage. Now, as far as matchup hunting wise, I'm not going at the pier lock. I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm getting down for the rebounds. I'm staying out the way. The ideology for our offense is let Tanner Cook in the ISO on the, on the post score and just take advantage of the lack of speed that he has and let Tanner just go shot creator mode while I just crash rebound. So... The, the plan is essentially to attack the weak perimeter defender and force the really elite perimeter defender to sit in the paint and just not even be able to, you know, do anything in terms of actually making an impact on his, like, defensive side. He has to rebound with me in this case. Now, I will say, you can, you'll see eventually they do try and make a switch. They're going to try and get the lockdown onto Tanner and the big man onto me because that's clearly the best way they should play. You know, all truth be told... Obviously, you know, you put a big guy on me, it's going to be a tough time for me to create anything offensively. And then if you put a lockdown on Tanner, it's going to be a tougher time as far as, you know, we're going to have to force switches and stuff like that. Now, I just want to talk a, a little subcategory point of my video here, talking about is this morally correct to run? Honestly, fellas, I don't care. I don't I, I don't care what the morals are on this stuff, whether a post score is like too toxic, too OP to be ran on twos. Like, I mean, obviously we're double teaming him and can't stop him. I'm getting hit with a drop step, getting knocked down to my knees. But my thing is, at the end of the day, you can make whatever build you want in this game. And the truth to it, and what I really re get frustrated with when people act like what I run right here is cheese and toxic and stuff like that is... When you make a build for 2v2, or if you are on the 2v2 courts just in general, you didn't even have to make your build specifically for it, but if you're going to play on the twos, do you not understand that you're going to run into situations where if you have a build with no interior defense at the one, 
you're going to deal with all types of slashing and mashing or post score or lockdown stuff like this exactly and or for instance if we have tanner who's at the two with a very frail six like 73 strength build at the two to like have to deal with post scores we understand that that's something we're gonna have to run into so me personally i don't think you should ever sit here and blame the person for what they're running on the game when all things considered it's the meta it's what's easy and this right here is like how people should be playing twos i'm not trying to sound toxic and like encourage this type of play style you know but this is definitely the type of stuff that is going to be freer easier wins and it's just tough to deal with so people will run it and the truth be told is you need more interior defense you need more block you need more size at the two if you want to consistently beat teams like this as you can see i'm i'm crashing out i'm <laughs> i'm reaching into the lanes we're down 16 to 4 in this game and mind you like i said we have two different games against this team as well where you can see the adjustments that we made but anyway right here again the logic that i have behind this and i'm telling y'all it's just the smart thing to do in this regard let's go ahead and rewind it i'm gonna be real this dude's unstoppable in the paint even against double teams in some cases and this dude's shooting off the dribble threes with 83 three-pointer i'll take it fellas i'll take it i don't care that's just the truth about this the fact of the matter is if the dude wants to throw the game by shooting an open jump shot and that's where we're at in 2k right now <laughs> that's so be it man but anyway, as you can see, matchup switch, unfortunately, right here. So lockdown's on Tanner. Big man's on me. I'm trying to screen the lock off of Tanner. So they do switch him back up. And that's to our favor, in my opinion. Because, again, I want to be down there with the rebounds with the lock on me. He's not exactly, like, the biggest body. It's not, like, a super tough rebound matchup for me. It didn't look like he had crazy rebounding stats. So now, as you can see, they're actually still lacking uh, the understanding of that the switch would be really good for them. And I think that's really all me and Tanner have on anybody on this game right now is chemistry, some IQ, and understanding of like, you know, matchup hunting and switches and stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, gritty just IRL ball where like <laughs> y'all really know you can't sell each other out too bad because at the end of the day, you're homies, you know, so nobody's really got any pressure on either of them to like, you know, be the sellout per se. But and no blame game either obviously you know we've played together on this 2v2 stuff for years bro i'm talking all the way back to like 2k15 now it's been a little bit more spotty here and there since then like me and him really used to play a lot back in like uh 15 16 17 stuff like that since then we haven't played quite as much as you can see two flukes back to back like he flukes me and then we fluke them i got two-way tenacity right here but i'm trying to wait around wait for tanner to dex off like the uh me using myself as a screener with the ball in hand <laughs> but as you can see reachy reachy lock i mean hey but anyway we try and keep the matchups away we're having him decks in and out so that they can't get the lockdown anywhere near him so we're just going shot creator mode on the post score again i'm not gonna lie though he is getting kind of bumpy i know you think tanner's dribbling like a bot but i'm telling y'all that that little zigzag stuff has actually been to our favor in a lot of cases but anyway, you can see he's kind of he's kind of boinking this game. I'm not gonna lie. But like I told you, gritty, gritty ball. We just be coming out here. He's got 40 steals. He's getting bump steals and all that stuff. He's got two of them for that matter. And <laughs> here we are. We're still in the game, man. It's eight to 16. We're trying to make sure they don't get the switch again. He goes one dribble pull up to the baseline. Boom. There we go. So a uh, little small detail that I want to uh, make a little subcategory of talking about in the video. For my max plus ones, I'm running Hall of Fame Dimer and Hall of Fame Rebound Chaser. So they, I put both those badges up from gold to Hall of Fame. And you can see it like play some factor. I'm not gonna lie, the drill pull-ups he's shooting right now, they're not really uh, like sparking the, the Dimer activation quite as much. But you will see a lot of cases where I hit him on like a catch and shoot like right here. And Hall of Fame Dimer is going to make a nice impact in my opinion. You can see it pop up right there. And again my rebound chaser and just the fact that i am crashing the boards off him shooting shots on the center equals a lot of times i am going to have a good look at the rebound so right there again dudes in the lanes like crazy we're, we're once again avoiding the switch even still i go for the box out on the center exactly to my point of what i'm talking about to you guys right here speed matchups and me with the rebounding ability. We have a, a wide open catch and shoot for him that I'm still getting down into position on the box out on two, mind you, a lockdown and a true big man right here. So we grab the board again, give him another dimer look in the mid range off the rebound chaser and boom, there we go. We're right in the game still off just, you know, nasty gritty ball of me not really being able to create anything other than just like as a passer. But unfortunately as you can see the lockdown is hawking the lanes bro again 98 steel he's got the legend interceptor and everything and he's a big body too so rough as you can see it's 18 to 17 they got ball it's a post score again 
so here's the logic right i told tanner we got a three up we can't give up a wide open three right there i'm gonna reach boom guess what happens we get the switch i'm going i'm using my fouls and again i know a lot of post scorers are gonna hate to hear this but guess what fellas you got five fouls to use technically four until you get kicked out of the game after the fifth one but you got four fouls you can comfortably use on this game mode use them who cares you're talking about that's toxic oh you're spamming you're using x guess what it's a post score you're just crying about it in the comments probably talking about post scores being toxic use your fouls use your x button attempts and stuff like that man a lot of times you're either going to get a reach in or you're going to get this right here on the drop step boom going for the reach pluck it off his body off him so uh, I want to just run this back one more time because, again, this is the IQ stuff I'm talking to you guys about, which, granted, I'm sure at least 20 30 percent of you guys are very aware of situations like this. But um, right here, I'm telling Tanner, no double team at all. We, if we give up a three, the game is over. That's 21 points. Obviously, you add three to it, you know, 18 plus three, 21. It's game's over. So you may as well let him dog out on the twos. Let me, like, 1v1 it and see if we can get some, you know, reach in, a foul, a steal right here, or even just in general if he scores on me, oh, well. Next possession, we'll let them shoot the three because then they're at 20 points and it won't matter as much. We get, like, a two for one if you get what I'm saying on defense. So it's stuff like that, fellas. Just high IQ, intelligent ball. You got to remember, like, just to use your head when it comes to sports. I mean, that's just truly what it is at the end of the day. And Tanner actually is a college athlete for that matter too. <laughs> so he's he's well aware of, you know, situational stuff as well. So right here, you can see lockdowns hawking in the lanes. Now we get the big man switched back onto him, zigzagging his life away into the baseline. He goes, I'm down there for the rebound again, because the big man has to contest the shot. If he leaves him wide open on it, it's a much easier shot for him to hit. I kind of just fake the screen a little bit and try and get him open. And boom, there we go. 19 to 18. One more basket and we win this game. <laughs> Getting out of the most ridiculous gameplay you've ever seen. But anyway, he goes for a crosser right there, trying to just make sure we got a clean lane and stuff like that. I'm going to fake the screen again and just dive down, trying to just kind of get people off him, yet still be down for the rebound. And there we go, right into the super close mid-range and gritty, gritty ball. Tanner with 20 shot attempts. <laughs> but obviously, I'm down here and seven rebounds on him. And I mean, hey, that's the game plan, fellas. I am not going to be able to create offensively against a lockdown or a true inside big man who's just gigantic with a good block rating as well. So... It's not a good matchup for me, and I got to get a lot more like Draymond Greenish out here, if you get what I'm saying. Just go gritty, like rebounds, passing, hit him when he's open, uh, play the pick and roll in the screens properly, and there we go. Ugly, ugly ball, but hey, I mean, it gets the job done. So obviously, I don't have a steal right here, but obviously, we plucked it off the big men, so that's why they have three TOs, and besides that, the game plan, like I said, was just to leave the spot up open. Unfortunately, that's just the truth of how you got to go about it. So anyway, let's get into the second gameplay now against the exact same team. Also, just in case you guys thought I was BS and talking about I've played every single game with Tanner, I'm going to show you the leaderboards right here. Shout out to ISO Ninja. I met him at Community Day. Really cool dude. And I honestly was sleeping on the fact that he was like comp with this stuff. He's number four on the leaderboards. That's crazy. I also saw Badge Plug is up here as well. Yeah, so he's at number 32. And then I and Tanner are both right here at number 50 and 49. So all while maintaining a 90 win percentage as well. I, I'd like to think that's up there quite a bit when it comes to the people on this leaderboard. I mean, like we got power up here. He's also had a 71 win percentage as well. Uh, badge plug and chalk, I think both had a pretty solid win. Like, yeah, you can see badge is at 91.5, chalk's at 85. And then also uh, like ISO Ninja, obviously, you know, was at like 78. So I'm liking to think that we got a pretty good win percent and all things considered the fact that it is just an IRL, but hey, I still got to put a lot of respect on Tanner's name. He's a really good IRL for that matter. I'd like to think I had a lot of good IRLs back in the day, and it actually kind of sparked me into doing this YouTube stuff. But again, I haven't played with uh, the boys quite as much, but I'm, I'm glad to be back on the game with Tanner a lot. But anyway, let's get back into the gameplay. I just want to show y'all that we were, you know, kind of out here doing it right now. <laughs> All right, so unfortunately, I started the recording like later than I would have been able to. So I can't prove to you that it's a back-to-back -back game against them. But I promise you, like, dude, <laughs> it really was. <laughs> um, but anyway, as you can see, same exact team, same exact intros. So we don't got to show you any of the intro stuff. Let's just go ahead and skip to the gameplay. So they get ball first in this one. And obviously, that's something tough for us. We don't really like to see that. I don't know, uh, there's nothing that determines who gets ball first, but as you can see, bro just shoots it off the rip, so they don't even get ball first, because they end up missing. I mean, granted, you know, it's it's percentages, you have to understand that, like, the dude, you know, <laughs> you get what I'm saying. <laughs> it doesn't just mean we get ball first, because he missed, because obviously he could have made that shot, but anyway. Unfortunately, they get ball right back, because we miss it off the, the pick and roll right there. So now, you can see, we're just once again, trying to leave the lock open, and I'm telling y'all, that really is the strategy when it comes to playing these guys. It has to be. 
100%. But anyway, right here, big man on me. I'm not gonna be able to do anything, but we're just trying to create a little bit, get a nice little catch and shoot opportunity. I'm able to grab the board on the big man, so I'm assuming his rebounding might be a little bit weak too, considering he has to have all types of offensive things like, you know, close shot, post control, strength. He's got the block rating on his build too. I bet he probably has like 80 ish uh, rebound for like the rebound chaser on silver or something like that. But granted, I only have 85 O board, so don't think it's too much of a discrepancy but anyway nice three from tanner right there into the corner his lethal zone is in the left corner so we try and like make sure he can stay over there so now you can see this is where we start playing our little mind game adjustment they don't need to do this type of stuff in my opinion fellas we have to get gritty ball and for them to do something like this where they're trying to switch the lockdown onto tanner in the center down to me he's too slow to afford to do this those those like teams that run the iso uh sort of point guards and then like a popper at the two who's like six seven they pull this switch off very well because the bigs are fast enough to switch from the top off the inbound down to me in the paint quick enough but against big glass cleaners like seven foot insides and stuff like that or post scores it's a tough tough time in my opinion for them to pull off that switch in time as long as i set up uh everything properly on the inbound right here i mean you can see this lock is getting so crazy <laughs> trying to play the lane as well so again we're getting free points when they don't really need to give us stuff like that it's going to be a tough time for us to create offense against a team like this it's really just it all comes down to tanner as a stretch big trying to get open in the shot creator style so again i'm getting down early trying to make sure they can't get that switch off so now we got tanner in that iso again i'm telling y'all it's that's the matchup we're trying to hunt the dude's too slow to guard him in my opinion and that zigzag stuff as corny and terrible as it looks he's really able to create with that in my opinion so again i'm hitting the crosser trying to make sure they can't get that matchup switch now i'm just hitting tanner on any decks he can do to get open boom wide open shot i'm sure the dude has low perimeter defense as well and here's the joke to it all i'm sure a lot of the people out there who don't understand that perimeter defense is super cheap on those taller builds i bet some of them just end up making 40 prim d post scores or something like that and honestly it's terrible ball in my opinion you could easily afford to max out your perimeter defense for whatever your height is and you could easily like not be such a liability in the in the pick and roll game so now as you can see i try and just leave him i try and go back and play the lane but unfortunately i was i was messing with the matchup switches it's just a bad habit when you play iso and stuff i'm trying to get tanner the arrow to make sure that he doesn't have to like you know um have a harder time on the on the iso defense but obviously that that point guard that point guard is not going to be something that he has to struggle with uh defensively or anything like that but anyway right there he hits a mean drop step it definitely just cooked my stuff <laughs> on that but anyway once again the the ideology needs to be leave the spot up we're just going to make it as simple as that so what i wanted to do was have tanner be the body up guy right here and then i'm gonna go play for like bump steals and stuff like that like for instance you see i almost got that one right there we seal a pretty decent box out in my opinion but he ends up still getting the rebound so now letting him shoot again and he just is breaking i mean that's just the truth of the game fellas i see my 90 96 three point point guards struggling to shoot the ball in this game it's just how it is so that's why we're also resorting to the really easy efficient shots for tanner which are just like you know spamming mid-range which to be fair even fades like that aren't exactly the easiest thing to hit i do acknowledge but if we can get him catch and shoot shots it's definitely what we prefer it's just obviously you know you don't get that opportunity all the time i seal a box out from super far right here but the block finally hits right here so yeah i mean <laughs> it's something that you got to just roll the dice on and you know it's the worst way to have to play the game to be honest because i hate just like letting it be up to chance and a dice roll and the rng of stuff but what you don't want is to give them any free opportunities down low like that and again i'm telling y'all i know it's toxic but you gotta return the toxicity against a lineup like this spamming those reach-ins and the fouls and stuff and tying them up i mean if it's at 14 seconds which it was right there and you can see that's like that is the the game plan is to give them less time to work with right there boom they're getting baited unfortunately it does result in a wide open three anyway still and he does hit it but again the premise of that region is still there when it's at like 14 15 maybe even 13 seconds or even less than that if you want it to be it's still a good idea now i will say they're starting to cook us a little bit they're hitting us with a backdoor cut right there obviously you know wide open threes that the dude's splashing so they're coming back pretty quick in this game on the offensive side of things but still got to live by the game plan you know you can't just like continue to leave this dude one-on-one -on -one and just let him cook the entire time the only time we did was when it was like a three-up situation you know but anyway he misses again that's just the life man i'm telling y'all like it's gonna have to be some really top teams and some top players to just keep splashing threes 
all game, every game, you know? I mean, even the best shooters in this game are at like 60% from three. So anyway, I'm crashing down on the rebound again. I am there. We're hitting the lockdown, trying to pinch me and just, you know, go for steals and lanes and stuff like that. So I'm waiting them all out on some true Draymond Green stuff, just <laughs> playing a playing a facilitator for Steph, or in this case, you know, Laurie Marketing, whatever you want to call him. So anyway, we try and get him with the back door right there. Nice little quick stop on the baseline. And I'm not going to lie. I thought it was missing by the angle of that shot, like the arc, but oh my God, it goes over the backboard and he greens it as well and you actually saw that in the last game where he hit like a dribble he tried to shoot a dribble pull up and it missed but anyway trying to hit a post uh post spin from tanner right there he tries to use that as like a speed boost sometimes now i'm just waiting out the reaches trying to return the ball to him and off the catch and shoot that's the type of shots he's good for man and i'm not gonna lie that's some really good power right there you know he's able to just literally shoot anything and i know a lot of my teammates you know like when i was telling them about the lineup and like if they ever wanted to duplicate it to try and run with us that Tanner's running like, you know, and as you can see, I sold the sold the play right there, but Tanner's running 6'11", and they're like, isn't that just terrible, like, perimeter D, isn't that terrible, like, ability to keep up with guards? Honestly, he's doing it really well, and the height is huge for just shooting over people, man. I'm telling you, like, it's super good for just shooting over guards. He becomes a problem for them to guard, and then if you have the versatility to even still be a decent threat in terms of guarding a team like this, granted, it's not really because we're just true on double teaming him, and the lockdown is still cashing, I'm not gonna lie, but... Now let's explain scoreboard terminology again right here you want to see three pointers like got up i'm gonna be real with you if you give up a two that means they get another two now technically speaking i guess both ways is okay because like a score is a score and it would really come down to they just have to score twice one way or another but realistically you'd want them to have to score threes on both of those because if they have 17 points let's just run this back real quick if they have 17 points, they hit a three-pointer right there. It puts them at 20. They're still going to have to hit another three because we're going to three up on them. or We're going to two up on them, if you will, where we're going to double team the post and force them to hit a three again. So we pretty much have a chance where if he misses one of the next two threes, we get the ball back as long as we attack the rebound well enough too. So that's the other key. When it comes to doubling the post score, not only do we make sure that he's not going to be able to do anything offensively, but we also double box out the rebound. And I'd like to think that's a really big, big deal. So right there, Tanner trying to get the catch and shoot again and just shooting over the lockdown. I'm telling y'all that stretch big life. It's really, really good in this game. But anyway, again, I'm on some true glass cleaner stuff against this team because obviously, like I said, the only type of buckets I'm getting are the ones where I catch it and they're trying to get the switch off. And I just take advantage of the fact that they're like, there's no one guarding me there because the big man can't get back fast enough. But yeah. That's the gameplay, fellas. I mean, double back-to-back -back games against the post scores, double red banners. I'm out here on the slasher, Tanner's on the stretch, and hey, I mean, <laughs> that's the type of matchmaking you're gonna get in this Proving Grounds 2v2 stuff. But I will not lie to you guys, I don't see it very often. So, if you're trying to figure out whether you wanna run this with your boy, you're trying to figure out if you even wanna run this lineup for that matter, what I see the majority of the time, to be honest with you guys, is probably more of like point guard and center like i'm being so serious like six three six two pgs and stuff like that paired with let's say like uh it could either be sometimes like a six eight six nine big man even six seven sometimes for that matter or what some teams are still running is like footers at the big where they're like a screener and stuff like that that's the matchups that we'd love to see because tanner is a great matchup for the bigs i'm a great matchup for the guards so that's the type of stuff that we see most often i would say the next most often would be like iso type uh, lineups where it's like a 6'6 guard who can like guard me pretty well for that matter and that's what I hate to see sometimes because then they also run with like a 6'7 6'8 big man who is just in the lanes 24 7 on Tanner it's not a great matchup for him either so it, it's those are the really gritty games that we have to kind of uh, find a way through because obviously their offense is still pretty solid too and then what I hate to see the most is double locks man oh my god double locks is just the worst it, it's just Dude's passing the ball back and forth every single play. You would think that with lanes being good, that it'd be like easier to play. But there's this glitch in the game, and I'm telling y'all, I don't want to talk about it too much because I hate to see the style, but the passes slow you down. I'm sure you've seen this, and if you hear it, watch it moving forward. Sometimes when you're trying to guard a pick and pop, oh man, I'm telling you, the pass will just pull you from where the passer was. Like it'll pull you toward the passer sometimes, and the pop just becomes even more open. And it's just terrible. So I don't know if it's something to do with arrows. I don't know what it is, but that feature in the game is awful. But I don't want to talk about it too much. It's super toxic to play on twos, where dudes just pass the ball back and forth as a lock. And again, their offense is terrible anyway. So it's like at the at the expense of their defense being unstoppable or un, unplayable on offense for us. So it's like super long games, like 10 minute 2v2 games, bro. It's just, it's just a terrible time. <laughs> but anyway. That's all video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new to them, notice all the good stuff. And like always, try to 2,000 likes. Made it to the end of the video. 
put twos, put stretch, or put slasher in the comments church sports mail through. Or you could just put Tanner in the comments church sports mail through. Shout out to my boy, man. I, I'm really having a fun time playing twos with him. And it's been good good ball, good vibes. So if y'all want to hear some more like live com stuff too, I'd be down. Man, if y'all even want like streams of us playing twos, I'm down too. But anyway, uh, whichever way you slice it, I'm down to just keep posting more gameplays of playing with him. I don't know. We might mix Tanner into the fives lineup a little bit as well as like a, t a tonic sub a little bit or also like playing threes with him is still good ball too. So I don't know. Or I might even get on the game with the IRLs a little bit more too like my other ones. But anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to check out the other one, we did another gameplay of us playing against like more guards and centers and stuff like that. Not the double post score stuff, but I'll definitely have more twos gameplay for you guys coming as well. I'd like to think this is some good vibes and I don't know. As toxic as the gameplay is, I like the intricacies of this stuff. I like how mind game twos can be, you know? Uh, whereas threes is all of, like stick. I think it's not a lot of IQ involved on threes. I think it's a lot more stick skill. Twos, I personally think, it takes a lot of IQ to play on here. I don't know. That's just my opinion. But anyway, that's all the video. Hope you enjoyed. None of that. Take man. Peace.